blessings and abundance. This is Brother Polite. Another episode of Rolls Royce Diaries. First thing I want to say is rest in peace, P and B. And let's talk about infatuation or infatuating. And let's make it clear that love and hate are the same thing, just varying in degrees on a pole. There's actually no opposites because if you were to say what's the opposite of left, we would say right. It's the opposite of up, we would say down. But this is based on personal body experience. As long as you're inside the body, these constructs exist. But where does hot actually begin? Where does cold actually begin? If you're outside of your body, there is no beginning point for left or right. When you have to give people directions, when you come up the stairs, just make a left and then go right. And if someone goes the wrong direction, that's because you told them based on your left or based on your right. If I was to ask the average person, what's the opposite of a cat? They may be compelled to say a dog. What's the opposite of red? You may be compelled to say blue. And that's based on your personal experience on earth, seeing bloods and crips go against each other, seeing cats and dogs go against each other, right? But then if I say, what's the opposite of a giraffe? We don't live in an environment where there's a giraffe to see the opposition, so we don't really make a determination about what's the opposing field. So this is based on your experience on earth. And it's a personal experience. So what I'm here to talk to you today about is being careful with love. It's a powerful force, but we have to understand love is one and the same as hate. It just varies in degrees on a pole. Where someone loves begins can be where someone's hate extends. This is important in order to survive this planet. You feel what I'm saying? So a person could love the fact that I'm a teacher. They could love how much respect and the rapport that I get, the engagement. They could love how the people look up to me. And they said, I love that about Brother Polite. Up until the point, it's a person that actually wants to be a teacher too. Love without integrity, love without determination, love without discipline, love without self-respect is a very dangerous element because it can transmute into hate. So if you love me as a teacher and you love the way the people engage me and you love my popularity, and you love the impact that I have around the world and you love how I'm celebrated and you teach for those reasons, not necessarily because you wanna empower people, but you love all the things that I get, the fruits of my labor. You love the fruits, but you don't love the labor. So you love me and then you endeavor to become a teacher one day. And what happens when you endeavor to become a teacher? When you endeavor to become a teacher, then guess what happens? When you endeavor to become a teacher and people don't engage you the same way, they don't celebrate you the same way, or maybe you just don't have the patience to wait till your time comes. The love transmutes into hate because now you start looking at me like I'm the problem. Well, people like him, but they don't like me. And you start finding all the little idiosyncrasies and the little nuances that make me great that you've yet to bring to the surface yourself. And rather than you bring it to the surface, you say, I'm not going to do it that way. That's actually the wrong way. And now you start finding things wrong with me, but you loved me in the beginning. You wanted to do your eye just like I do my Egyptian eye. You use my terms. You want to be polygynous just like I was polygynous. Then you go against it. Then next thing you know, you're for it. After you terrorize me and, and slander my name, now I become the enemy. And now you're an uh, amazing pro-black teacher yourself online, but you're attacking me when you loved me in the beginning. So now it doesn't matter about the local drug dealer that lives in your community that you gotta walk by when you come out to your apartment, the pimps that you gotta walk by, the people that prostitute people, in your community, people that rob, people that steal, people that gangbang, you walk by all those people when you come out to your apartment every day in your community to talk about me, a person that lives miles away from you, you'll probably never even see in person, so you believe. I'm the enemy, and you're willing to post my pictures, my family names, everything about me. You're brave, because you out here attacking brother polite, but you won't attack the people in your very community by name, by face, by date, by time, by block, by neighborhood, but you're bold enough to talk about me. Hmm. You're bold enough to talk about me. Bold. How does that work? Because the love becomes hate, because when you realize it's not easy being me, and you don't get the same esteem, the same engagement, the same love, the same rapport, now you want to attack me. So this is above and beyond just being killed for a chain. I'm saying if you're great, if you're brilliant, if you're bright, if you're lit, these words are all synonymous with jewelry. I am the jewelry. And many of you are the jewelry in your family and the jewelry in your neighborhood. So it doesn't really matter if you're wearing a chain. doesn't matter if you're showing off money. doesn't matter if you got a nice car. People will simply 
hate you out of the fact that they love you. They love what they've yet to make manifest on this plane. They love what they yet to bring to the surface themselves, but they see it in you. So every time they see you, okay, you are a reflection of that which is transpiring within that they've yet to bring to the surface. So it's almost like you're bragging every time they see you. It's just like when I went vegan, I would go by friends and family members' house and I swear, I swear, they would treat me as though I was judging them. They would treat me as though, like they couldn't just eat their food. They felt like it was some form of condemnation that they were eating what they were eating and I would decline, I don't want that, oh, I don't drink that. I'm not judging no one, but they grew insecure eating around me because I changed what I'm drinking and I changed what I ate. So now they don't feel comfortable in their own skin being around me because they start introspecting inadvertently. So just you changing yourself uh, in the midst of people that used to be on the same path as you is enough for people to hate you because their own thoughts start attacking them because they their own mindset says, why haven't I changed yet? And then they go through this, this wickedness where, well, I'll be damned if I change. Something wrong with him. Not why he, why he think he better than me. She thinks she better than me. So now they want to know the fuck is up with you. You've been eating and drinking like this your whole life. Why you switch? And you're like, yo, bro, this is something I'm doing in my journey. We all move at different speeds. Because for me, it's not about quantity of life. It's about quality of life. So I miss me with the, she ate swine and she died at age 98. And the vegan, you know, he died at 82. I'm talking about the quality of life and things I'm looking to accomplish personally. My cognizance, my awareness, there's quality of life and there's quantity of life. Give me the quality over quantity. Because hospitals will prolong your death. But they won't prolong your life. You have life insurance policies, but they're really death insurance policies. That's a whole nother conversation. That's a whole nother conversation. But anyway, it's either infatuation or infatuating infatuation or infatuating and we live in a world where the paradigm has shifted to infatuating rather than people see the glory and, and marvel at your splendor and say i need to strive to get there by asking you questions or someone else relatively that's in that same genre you know what they do they pick their spots and they find things wrong with you because you remind them of all their insecurities because they failed to believe that you really worked that hard to get what you had to go. And you also did what you wanted to do just out of the genuineness of you being you. I never wanted to be popular and uh, uh, what people may deem as a celebrity. or where I, I, It's not a city or state or country I've been to where people don't say, yo, I get a pic. Oh, yo, you brother polite. I've never been anywhere where that doesn't happen. I never thought that would happen. I just like to read and write. I wrote my 96 books, speak seven languages out of my own personal drive. I never anticipated I would get such a huge response from the world. Never. I just woke up like this. You, you heard? I woke up lit one day. Other people, they want all those other things, but they genuinely don't want to raise the people. And that's why they'll never get the same response. I don't do videos talking about other people tearing them down. But these same people act like there aren't people in their neighborhood that they need to post their face and post their pictures and post their children and post their women and, and post and talk how angry they are with them and what they're doing in the community. People act like they just live in great communities and they have to attack me miles away because they're full of it because secretly they just hate. And what I'm saying is in light of the brother being uh, murdered for jewelry, you guys are the jewelry. So if it's not a chain, it's the money. If it's not the money, it's the car. If it's not the car, it's your drip. Your clothes, your sweat. Protect yourself at all times. Life is like boxing. Protect yourself at all times. Never get caught lacking because at the end of the day, you are the jewelry. You need to start walking these streets understanding that if something makes you distinctly different from everyone else, that contrast is enough for you to be alarmed and you need to raise your cognizance 
of the type of people who will simply want to kill you or wish harm on you or do harm to you just because you represent what they've yet to manifest that they've been trying to bring to the surface but fail to do so. Pardon me using the word try. So you know that's it for Rolls Royce Diaries. Just wanted to talk to you guys, you know what I'm saying? Talk to me nice. Rolls Royce Diaries, you know. Yeah. Rolls Royce Diaries. Trip reporting. I'm still on my shit. But you know, people will hate you for money. They'll hate you for women. They'll hate you because of clothes. They'll hate you for jewelry. Hate you just because your vocabulary. He, he just talks over people's heads. He says things people don't understand. That's why you like him. Like, man, knock it off. You're insecure because you don't understand. You're acting like we don't have Google and you can't look up the words. I just say what I say to empower people. Plus, I speak the way I read. I speak based on what I do and who I'm around and my engagement throughout the day. So just like you start speaking like the people you hang around, I speak like the people I hang around and I speak like that which I'm reading constantly. I don't go in here and like, yo, let me hit them with this four or five syllable word. But the reality is the way we've been educated, we've been educated on two, two three syllable words. So just like people can be like human beings are five blind. So that's why when you're five blind, I'm explaining that in the car. It might be too loud. Well, when you're five blind, what happens is that we have to put one line, two lines, three lines, four lines, right? And then you have to put that line across the four to make it five because it gets confusing. After we see four things next to each other, anything after four, we become a bit blind or we have to just double check to make sure we see five. So normally we, we see four lines next to each other or we're counting something, we cross it at the fifth mark because we get five blind. Some birds are 16 blind. So the same thing with vocabulary, right? With words, if the words have more than three syllables, the way they've been educating us, we start to get four syllable blind, technically. Like, if the words that we're using or we have to learn or someone is speaking goes four syllables, five syllables upward, we start growing in frustration because the way they taught us in the public school system, they saturated our vocabulary with two syllable and three syllable words. So people get frustrated when I start bossing up and I'm going five, four or five syllables on. That's another conversation. But anyway, Rolls Royce Diaries, we still out here. Understand you are the jewelry. So don't just be afraid if you got a chain on. Don't just be afraid if you got a chain on. <laughs> Understand. And I'm not telling you live in fear either. But I'm also just telling you, you are the jewelry. If you're great, you always are a threat. If you're brilliant, you are always a threat, okay? If you're intelligent, you're always a threat. If you have style, if you have grace, if you have self-respect at the highest level, you're always gonna be a threat. So don't think it's just jewelry. These mother out here will kill you and hurt you and wish harm on you just because you represent what they've yet to manifest, that they want to manifest, but something's disabling them or they just don't have the patience. They wanna microwave success. People want to microwave success. You feel what I'm saying? Everybody would like to believe the people that are successful just got it. And there was nothing special or intrinsic about their worth. Blessings and abundance. Love you guys. Remain safe out there and understand that if you are great, you are truly blessed. And don't let nobody tear down your light because you actually are the jewelry that people want to steal. Okay? I'm too smart to be broken.